Shane should know this is ha- about to happen. I watched the entire Limp Biscuit Lollapalooza 2021 set. And holy fuck, if it was not like one of the most accidentally uplifting things that I've ever watched, it feels like it felt like the end of uh, the Queen movie, you know, where they're playing their like, was it Woodstock gig? Is it? Well, if he can still bring it back after how many decades, then, you know, anyone can. Hear me out. Hear me out. Shane, you've already heard a little it's, bit of this. Yeah, firstly, it's Live Aid, but... Um, okay, yeah. Live Aid, my bad. Um, someone with Live Aid. So, I would not expect Fred Durst to do things that he did during this performance. For one, in between songs, his banter is just amazing, I think. And he's like, who out here is vaccinated? And every hand goes up and he goes, huh. How considerate. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then in between one song, he, uh, he goes back to grab his water. It's like it's canned water. He goes, huh, can you believe this? Canned water. <laughs> Death to plastic, y'all. Uh, <laughs> and then the best one, the best one is he's like, it's like, yeah, you know, it's not good putting things up your butt. You got to be careful what you put up your butt. And then he goes, but you know what? Some things feel good up there. So you do you <laughs> are you are you taking down notes for your band's banter uh, between, yes okay good. yeah what that's I'm actually, not how you guys do the 15th i'm not coming what, yeah, what's exactly. actually <laughs> gonna happen is and i told shane this that now i'm in this like weird fred durst <laughs> intrigue where i want to look up his life because shane was around when the wheel was invented and when Fred Durst started making music. <laughs> like, so, stop, like, stop pulling me in on top so of Shane, you. Shane is, I, I would assume, uh, at least somewhat familiar with how much of a piece of shit Fred Durst was. And I, I don't wanna, think that's changed given the context of what you've been saying here, I want to find out. Also, he was dressed up as an old man. So his yeah, persona... I, it, was, uh, yeah. it was very off-putting seeing Just pictures Google of him it. like it's that. Just Google it. It's fucking yeah. hilarious. Google me, Chuck. I honestly Google would have me. thought he would have Google brought me. back the beanie, considering that was one of his like you know main things. I think but, what he's uh, trying to say is like he, you know he used to be the backwards red cap guy, and yeah. now he's not that guy anymore. So oh, he's, he's, just, no. he's just he's just an old man. He's the hip old man that everyone likes to talk to and chill with. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, the, this is how we learn, and this is how we burn. Oh, I thought you were gonna say move on. But. And Courtney, if it makes you feel better, that is not the first nor the last time John will have a woman tell him that she's not coming. <laughs> but for those of you who have no clue what's going on, welcome to the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Courtney. And we sincerely appreciate that we have now turned into LimpCast, but uh, <laughs> I, what we... I, it's not even a bit. Like, I think I'm going to deep dive their catalog because I, I, <sighs> like, I feel like I just got woken up inside again. Hey, if the, he has the new metal kid in me is coming life, out. Make an episode on it. Well, I'm also balls deep in watching Illuminati shit right now for an episode that might happen in a month or might happen in a year. So there's a concept. Stop doing alien hands, Michael. <laughs> There's 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 a concept called juggling different projects. It's it's well, hard it like... where you can do more than one episode. You can write scripts for more than one episode. Huh? You know, it's it's. I know it's an alien concept, like aliens concept. There. You did the um, hands but, Yes, yes. I I enjoy doing the hands. Um, but that about you. Something you can always look into. Okay. Why are we back to Why are we back to season two again? I tried. I tried to transition us, and we're, you did. We're Sorry, back. I just I got really excited. You can't talk. About, Fred Durst is a trigger for me now. You can't say his name. <laughs> Thankfully, he will he not be. He will not be in this week's episode. So there you go. I'm gonna get off. We're gonna get off air, and I'm gonna go like look up Fred Durst, and he's gonna have probably like a list of allegations, and this is gonna be a really, really poor timed episode, probably. Well, if you're planning on going deeper on Limp Biscuit, my friend, if I may crib from Tarantino, you're like a man who did a high dive in a low well. And speaking of low wells, the bar's never been lower because Michael's going to present a topic to us this week. And what 
we typically do on this show is we'll delve into a random esoteric topic like the Limp Biscuit extended catalog. <laughs> and uh, in the course of explaining it to one another, we will let an end the occasional lie just to try to keep things interesting because that is our shtick. And uh, it is then incumbent upon the other hosts to ferret out the fact from the fiction, as it were. And there are no points and no one wins because we can't do maths. True. But huh? uh, Michael, what are you? Uh, what are you throwing at us this week? So uh, I titled this episode uh, "Synanon: The Drug Program That Went Full Scientology," and you don't go full Scientology. <laughs> but I wanted is a, to. Is that a Tropic Thunder <laughs> quote? Like an amended Tropic Thunder reference? Most likely. I haven't mm. seen the movie, but I know the reference. Oh, so. fuck off. Thank <laughs> you so much. Even I've seen that one. <laughs> you never go full Michael, right, guys? No oh, one goes no. full Michael. I barely go full Michael. <laughs> I've only ever seen well, you get to 43. You, you yeah. might want to get your circulation checked then if that's a problem. I Maybe can't your feel doctor the tips can prescribe my something. It's not the only tip you got a problem with, friend. I can't feel. I haven't felt that in years. Um, so you're not alone. There's no one else feeling it either. <laughs> uh, and especially not listening to my episodes. Um, so I wanted to ask for your guys' opinions on Christ. drug rehabilitation programs like AA. What do you think about them, and do you think they work? They're for fucking quitters. <laughs> I mean, that's From the sober that's, man in the room. Okay, that's fair. Uh, that is an accurate <laughs> statement. So. Yeah. <laughs> Never give up. <laughs> Never surrender. You miss a hundred percent of the drinks you don't. <laughs> you drink. don't chug. <laughs> you miss one hundred percent of the shots that you don't order. There you go. Yeah. So my parents used to volunteer with a group that would help people after they got out of their like um programs. Um, and so my parents were really big anti-drug people, but then my mom texted me last week and asked if I could get her marijuana seeds. So I just don't really feel like they work very good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's an interesting take. I like that. I personally, I think I want to romanticize and believe that they work. I wish that they would exist without God having to be present in, uh, in that process, yeah. which is a nice little tie-in to the fact that uh, the Satanic Temple, our, our friends, um, do have their version of AA now that is God-free. Um, they have support really? groups that, they, that they're putting together for people that want to be sober. So uh -huh. I maybe I should send that, that link and you can throw that in your in yeah. places too. That's really well, cool. And if you get borderline on being lost to despondency, you can always just come to Mother. That is very God true. <laughs> Enter the knoll, I, I'd love to say. Um, what about if they were designed not to rehabilitate, but to brainwash? Do you think they would be more successful that way? Yeah, because Christians already have their hands in it. it that's, that's already what it is, so yeah. I don't... <laughs> it's, it, you're, replacing, you're replacing one drug, or whatever your drug of choice is, for another drug. Which is well, no, it's a dependency religion. thing because the whole idea with a lot of the like groups is that they take the dependency from the substance and then you put it on the group or on God. And so you're just refocusing that energy. Oh. And that's usually why it doesn't work out so good because it's not as <laughs> what fun. You, what you're There's describing more is, rules. is essentially Sarah Marshall to Aldous, uh, is it Aldous and forgetting Sarah Marshall? Where uh, movie Russell years, so Russell remember. Brand's character is the uh, the ex junkie rock star who's dating the titular character. And isn't that how? It, she, isn't that the role he plays in like every movie? Basically, that's okay. just but who he, he is. Yeah, yeah. She okay. she explodes on him because in the movie he's been sober for x amount of time, and she goes, "You will turn anything into a drug because what he turned into his quote unquote drug is working out and getting into yoga and spiritualism and like and that shit." So yeah, so I already think it's happening. Well, I, I guess uh, these were a, li a, a bit episode, too, huh? uh, uh, yeah, a bit too loaded. <laughs> since you, well, um, there are five lies. Um, you might be able to tease them out since you guys already sound like you have a pretty good understanding of drug rehabilitation programs. You know, some um, of us know addiction. And accept well. research, Michael. That's, and, uh, that's <laughs> fair. always have an exit plan. 
<laughs> oh no! Don't worry, I do. I got a loaded revolver right here. Um, but- oh my God. <laughs> me first, me first, please. <laughs> um, it's so- rubber bullets, but it'll still hurt. <laughs> oh, it'll knock me out. It won't kill me. I don't want that, but it'll knock me out for the rest of the episode. You're the only one. <laughs> um, so, not going too deep in Alcoholics Anonymous, um, because that alone can fill several episodes worth, uh, but it helps set the stage for the founder of Synanon, uh, Charles Dedrich Sr., and why he decided to start his own drug rehabilitation program. Um, essentially, for people that have no idea what AA is, uh, it treats alcoholism as an illness as opposed to the commonplace belief that it is a failure of wills or morals which was originally how alcoholism was thought to be uh it uses a 12-step system wherein the individual goes through a program of non-coercive self-improvement by admitting to powerlessness over alcohol acknowledging and striving to correct personal failings making amends for past misdeeds and continued spiritual development while helping other alcoholics towards sobriety I mentioned uh, spiritual development in the 12 steps. They suggest the healing aid of an unspecified God, which you had already alluded to, John, when you mentioned that. Uh, While they are non-denominational, they only accept theist members. Agnostic, atheist, and non-theist people must find somewhere else. That's bullshit. I mean... That is, you're right. Yeah, I was going to say, because agnosticism still accepts a higher power, which is technically the term that they use, is or, whatever your higher power is. That's or if fair. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I could have kept agnosticism <laughs> in the accepted one. That, yeah, that was, yeah. That, was a, that was a slip up on my part. Um, yeah, you're right. It is bullshit. While they do mention an unspecified God, they most certainly accept people of all denominations, all beliefs. Um, and they, they also accept denominations in all currency as well. Right. Yes. What an easier um, way to convert somebody. You get them at their weakest point. Yeah. And then you turn it into a dollar. Hey, John, it sounds like you're figuring it out. You're on yep. to something here. <laughs> it goes all the way to the top. <laughs> all the way to the top. <laughs> um, AA is strictly apolitical, uh, avoiding controversy by having no opinion on anything other than recovery from alcoholism. And that members or groups should not use AA to gain wealth, prestige, or property, and that dogma and hierarchies are to be avoided. Now, I will say that is their message, that is their stance. Of course, people will take advantage of that. So if you know any particular cases or uh, groups that have done that, that's not necessarily AA. That's more the kind of independent nature of the of these groups. Um, because I did read a lot of uh, other articles that didn't necessarily cover Synanon, but covered the more um, from the bottom, like bottom to the top sort of uh, structure that AA goes for. Um, but I just wanted to mention that as a disclaimer. In the same way that not everyone who's in the sanitation business is in the mob. Exactly. Um, okay, Tony. Though you can see you by having <laughs> by having that kind of stance... Uh, and having these limits, that can be a good thing, right? Because having these sort of restrictions uh, can prevent people from using, say, their program uh, to turn it into, like, a religious cult. Or manipulating people who are susceptible to being weak-willed just by their nature, as evidenced by the reason they're there. Uh, this is going to be a reoccurring theme. Uh-huh. Uh, enter <laughs> Charles Chuck Dederich. Uh, I don't Bless actually you. know how to pronounce that, so I'm just going to call him Chuck from here on out. Could be uh, Diedrich, but, uh, you know, either way. Probably was. Live your life. Yeah. Um, he's dead, so I don't care. Uh, <laughs> so he's dead Rick. Yes. Dead, dead Rick. Rick. Yes. Dead, dead Rick. Rick. I'm dead Rick. I'm dead um, Rick. Age uh, 43 in 1956, who spent the previous 20 years of his life drunk. Um, a sales Same. yes, uh, a sales executive from Ohio. He moved to Southern California after his first divorce and joined AA in, like I said, 1956. He thrived in AA, going to every single, going to a meeting every single day and talking for hours during these meetings, uh, and quickly became a sober, a sober, like pretty much uh, Evan. Ge- I knew I was going to pronounce that wrong. Pretty much being a, a, a sober mouthpiece. It, it, he preached it to anyone that would hear. Evangelical and yeah. is what you're running with? Okay. So, yeah. Um, but 
there was one major problem. AA did not accept other kinds of substance abusers because it was thought that their addiction issues were significantly different from alcoholics. Granted, Narcotics Anonymous was founded several, several years prior in 1953, um, but by the late 50s, the organization had not fully really organized, so it was pretty scattered. And the groups that did form were, they met rarely. and They, they were a disorganization. Then. Yes, very, <laughs> very much so. All right. Um, after volunteering for an LSD experiment, uh, Chuck decided that he wanted to help not just alcoholics, but other types of drug abusers as well. Am I, can I go bullshit on the LSD just because it's a little too close to home? No, it, it, it was true. <laughs> he actually did sign up for uh, the original LSD experiments um, that were being held. I think it was Harvard that had them uh, in the early 50s. Because if you're having difficulties with alcohol, obviously, drugs are a good alternative. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, not all drugs, but LSD specifically. Well, um, yeah. he, after his test, he had an epiphany. And he decided that he wanted to help not just alcoholics, but other types of drug abusers as well. Uh, he convinced several of his AA um, group members to join his new group that he called Tender Loving Care. <laughs> no. Bullshit. No. That's true. That is what oh. he called it. I don't like DLC. it. Make, yeah. Pick a different Gross. name. Well, he does. He does. Um, it was uh, originally called Hunka Hunka Burning Support, but they didn't think they could lobby people to it. I see uh, that one. I would go to the that one sounds better to me. Hunka Hunka Burning Support. As long as it doesn't burn with pee, you should. It find. sounds like weird speed oh. dating. <laughs> yeah, or, or a uh, the next from Victoria's Secrets new uh, fall line <laughs> <laughs> for anything over a C cup. Oh, hunka hunka burning support. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of his phrases that he coined around this time, uh, today is the first day of the rest of your life. He, it was thought to be coined by him. Um, but it was actually first used by Johnny Cash. Uh, Johnny Cash, who had been struggling with drugs, got sober for seven years following the birth of his son john carter cash and he would say that to himself almost like a mantra every morning that um that he would you know every morning he woke up during that seven year period that he was sober why does that feel like a lie i don't know does it it does <laughs> i don't know johnny cash just seems so random uh it's true i mean it's true that it is a lie you got it <laughs> thank yeah. you yeah you sniffed it out correctly that's a weird way to nail the dismount on that yeah, one. Yeah, I was like, but, I was like, uh, so I'm sorry. No, nah, yeah, tell me I'm wrong, Doug. <laughs> no, nah, Johnny Cat. Yeah, that whole thing is a lie. I mean, he does have a son named, you know, John Carter Cash. But, yes, this was more the '70s uh, when his son was born, and he actually he did get sober uh, following the birth of his son for about seven years. Mm -hmm. um, but he did not use that phrase, and he didn't repeat it like a mantra to himself. According to Wikipedia, because I didn't find this in any of the other sources, all the other sources said that he coined that term. According to Wikipedia, the phrase is part of the chorus of the song O Primario Dia, because I had to say that is, I had to butcher that as best as possible, uh, cool. from the Portuguese uh, singer Sergio Godino. I did not find any other source that collaborated that, but I figured I'd throw it in there. Godino. <laughs> So, Courtney, you said that you didn't like the name Tender Loving Care. Well, neither did Chuck, because in 1958, after some initial successes, he incorporated his program as Synanon. Sources differ on where this name came from. I found three different sources. Um, one, the first one, uh, it's a new word combining aspects of togetherness, or syn, uh, spelled S-Y-N, with the unknown, Anon. Um, I couldn't verify this one, and I dug pretty deep to try and verify it, uh, but a 1959 Santa Monica newspaper um, article reported that Synanon was short for Sins Anonymous, which I liked that, and I wanted to keep it in even if it wasn't fully verified. Yeah. And then my favorite from a Paul Morans, who we'll see later, uh, much later, actually, uh, reported that the name came from a member slurring the words symposium and seminar. I have no idea how that came about, <laughs> but that's what he had said. 
In 1959, Synanon moved to an armory on the beach of in so- Southern California and thus began its transition to, from an AA clone to a fully fledged rehab program. And not an army. <laughs> that comes later. All right. That comes later. <laughs> um, this program followed a lot of the same tactics that AA employed, uh, removing the addict from negative influences, uh, confessional testimony, and group cohesion. Uh, but Chuck took it a step further. Uh, entrance into the Synanon community required an intense initial commitment, much more than AA, which just re- asks, politely asks that you show up. Uh, after a brief interview by Synanon leadership, newcomers entered into a one to two year long commitment with the community. Uh, they were forced to quit cold turkey with no drugs and were expected to cease contact with outside friends and family for the first 90 days in the program. Their program consisted of three stages aimed at preparing members to reenter society. First, they did community and housekeeping labor within the community. Next, they found work outside the community, but still lived within the community. And the final stage involved working and living outside the community, but still attending regular meetings, similar to AA. And that would be kind of the graduation sort of aspect of it. Just because it's related to things that I've been reading about. That sounds like the People's Temple, almost to a T, like in their time uh, into Redwood, uh, or Northern Northern California. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there are a lot of similarities, especially when you look more into Simular. Chuck. What? Are we living in a similarity? <laughs> similarity. <laughs> I... Sim- similar. Similar. There's a lot of similarities between him and <laughs> whatever. There's there's similar stuff. Fuck. Uh, anyway. Good boy. <laughs> Synanon differed majorly from (laughs) AA in one way. Uh, The idea of tough love. Uh, You see, Chuck had developed a method that he called the game. God. Yes. He met uh, Mr. E. Yeah, and he lost the game. I just watched this movie. This is just Saw again. (laughs) Would you like to play a game? Um, It also is known as the Synanon game, but I'll refer to it as the game. Um, the game consisted of a group of people calling out one another's bad behavior, essentially an aggressive form of group therapy. During this, members were encouraged to be hypercritical of everything, including harsh and profane language. Essentially, they would ask a question like, who do you think fucked up the most this week? Or who do you like the least? Or something like that. It was supposed to be really almost like an aggressive form of uh, catharsis. So it's an episode of our podcast. Yeah. I was going to say, it sounds like growing up with five siblings. Like, that's just every day when you're the oldest of six. Ooh. Physical violence was not encouraged, but was allowed (laughs) if and only if all participating members agreed to allow it for the session. So typically, you weren't supposed to throw punches. But if everyone's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go in the ring. Then it was fine. Uh, it only again the... growing up with siblings. Same thing. Sounds like a Marvel origin story, <laughs> like the uh, like a bar with no name, or you know where they go learn how to box or Fight Club. Uh, except for they they would talk about it outside of Fight Club. Um, it only lasted for about an hour or two at the time, uh, and the rule was that outside of the game, members had to act uh, civilly with each other. They were required to, um, and they could get a, they can get into a lot of trouble if they weren't. So if anyone passed out or tapped out, the fight was over and, uh, you know, you, you were to leave for the day. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, one of the most important aspects of the game was that whenever uh, or that whatever hierarchies like leadership and everything was completely uh, whatever existed outside the game did not exist inside the game. Anyone was able to be criticized, critiqued, yelled at, screamed at, etc. Um, it it was in, even including Chuck. If Chuck was in one of your the game sessions or whatever you could just scream at him all you want you can vent your frustrations at him fuck you up chuck (laughs) (laughs) uh it was immensely helpful during this period of synanon uh, as leadership could easily obtain opinions of community members and let them vent frustrations without letting them get out of control now uh may i call bullshit on uh the whether violence was not openly encouraged i feel like this is something that they would openly encourage violence so, 
you are right in calling it bullshit, <laughs> but you're okay. wrong. It actually, physical violence was completely discouraged, not okay. allowed. I was going to say, because it's either this is an all or nothing kind of thing. You don't just get to slap box if you've escalated enough. Like, if you're going to talk that much shit, it is either you do nothing or you kill each other by the time you're done with this. Yeah. Like that, see, Half measures don't seem to work with a scenario like that. So That's a very good point, yeah. Um, yeah, it, w- it was completely banned at this stage. And I because... mentioned this stage because it changes and it's actually kind of a tipping point in later... Uh, which we will find another okay. time. Because I was going to say, with Jonestown in particular, they were actively encouraged to be violent with one another. And uh, by the time they actually got to the full swing, it's like, oh, yeah, go ahead. We're going to ridicule and then beat this person unconscious and <laughs> shove them in a box. And they can simulate death for a few uh, hours and see what that feels like. The whole organization was strictly... I'm, I'm talking with my hands. I'm sorry. I, I, I have to talk with my hands. It's It's how I get energy out so i'm not wiggling all over the place lemurs (laughs) but essentially uh synanon was not was very pacifist they did not seek any sort of physical engagement while they were able to be physically and emotionally abusive during the game there was no sorts of there was no sort of physical abuse in any way shape or form uh, yeah. legally and it's it, important it, it, to have yes, boundaries yeah. in those yes. instances because there's got to be a cutoff yeah jumping ahead there is an actual tipping point that i had already mentioned uh where chuck actually poured soda on a um on a female during the game for talking trash about his wife at the time and that opened a pandora's box but we won't see that we won't see that here not for a okay. while but this program works surprisingly well especially because of all the restrictions people weren't able to just go up and beat the shit out of each other there was a lot of civility between members and they were able to get it out during the game um and in 1962 chuck expanded his operations to an empty national guard building on the beautiful santa monica beach now before i can or before i continue I want you to picture and assume what santa monica is all about it's very close to hollywood and fairly well off Right. So you could probably assume with all this upper echelon, high class, high brow sort of neighbors, a drug rehabilitation program, especially catering to narcotics abusers, wouldn't really sit well with a lot of the neighbors. Well, you Um, know, it's helpful, though, because they can live beside the ocean, leave the fire behind, swim out past the breakers and and watch watch the the world world die. die. Yeah. 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 But I want to give you a new life. But they didn't want to do that next to a bunch of dope fiends. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're they're I, not, they're they're actors there. They're doing it regardless. <laughs> yeah, they just yes. weren't comfortable with how close other dope fiends were to where they are. Okay, you want high class dope fiends as exactly. opposed to the scum of the earth. Okay. Yes, especially because Synanon was fairly forward thinking, and did not discriminate based on race or occupation. So they had a large, um, they had a large popula- or large group of minorities that were there and ex sex workers. Uh, in fact, Chuck's future wife was an ex sex worker. Uh, for a little bit of cool little information there. <laughs> so in she's case swapping, I needed to uh, entice you with a sex worker. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you take uh, from giving yourself shots in one form to. Move into another type, and it's just, uh, you know, one for the other. Yes. <laughs> so, enough, after a lot, a substantial amount of complaints from neighbors, uh, the city of Santa Monica acted. Chuck was arrested for operating in Santa Monica without a health license because he was technically, or he was treating drug addicts uh, without drugs, mind you, but he was still treating them. He was allowing them to quit cold turkey and he was housing them while they were doing that um and also for zoning law violations he claimed that he owned the beach front uh whereas the city maintained that it was city property um instead of moving out of the building as a condition for his release he uh, decided to serve his time in jail it was only a month but he still did it um and this martyrdom uh, made chuck a public hero granting him massive popularity outside Santa Monica. Um, The Californian governor at the time 
signed a save synanon bill, which is what it was called, uh, giving the group an exception, exemption, sorry, from health licensing laws. Essentially, Chuck was allowed to treat their addicted members cold turkey without any sort of repercussions from the state. I just imagine this exchange as he's initially being brought in as like the scene in Lebowski where he's being told to stay out of Malibu deadbeat. Like yeah. just uh, th- he someone hasn't hurls seen that movie, Shane. Yeah, I'm just for those of us who are familiar is it's you know someone chucking a, a cup of coffee at Chuck's head and uh, stay out of Santa Monica. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. During his stint, Chuck received massive amounts of donations from people in Hollywood. Uh, and after he got out, he allowed non-addicts, which were dubbed squares, to participate in the game. These squares didn't just come for the game, though. They came for his wife. <laughs> Early and often. So, there was not just the game that was being offered at Synanon. What major group can you think of that also deals with heavy drug use and is known for throwing amazing parties? Jazz musicians came in droves to Synanon <laughs> to kick their drug habit. Oh, you know, household names like Mookie, Mookie Kramer and the Eight Balls. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Paul band. Bufano. Yeah, yeah. Um, so many, so, so many, so many jazz musicians. So many jazz musicians. Are yep. you fucking I'm kidding stroking me? <laughs> so bad. Please turn your camera off. Yeah, yeah stop stroking. <laughs> Don't so go many, deeper. <laughs> so many jazz musicians there you go. came to Synanon that they actually formed their own group and recorded their own album called Sounds of Synanon in 1962. That's bullshit. <gasps> that is true. That I album even, exists? It Did exists, you listen to yes. it? No. Oh, so you didn't go deep with your topic? Not this time. I looked it up to verify that it did, in fact, exist, and Wikipedia confirmed that it was an album. Even 20 tabs, bro? Uh, I had 16 or 17 sources uh, for this episode. Did you try having 20? I could (laughs) have. Okay, so name (laughs) five. (laughs) <laughs> don't don't make five we trust you with your the sources, sources are located <laughs> oh, yeah. in the uh show notes so you can choose any of those five at your leisure choose your own adventure yes so and have a jazz magician show you how to do it curious yeah. of, about the <laughs> curious about the game and loving the jazz parties the squares came in droves especially those in hollywood uh, the guest list in 1963 alone included Rod Serling, the Twilight Zone creator, Ray Bradbury, who wrote Fahrenheit 451, and actors slash actresses Le- uh, Leonard Nim- <laughs> Nimoy. <laughs> Leonard <What>? Leonard <laughs> oh Nimoy. Oh my god! <laughs> really. <laughs> I have been incapable of speaking English For even years? more so. <laughs> no, even more so in this past week. It's ridiculous. I feel like I'm just stroking every day. <laughs> <laughs> and usually oh, only, God damn it, that and usually phrasing. you only stroke once per uh, week, so that's a lot. It's too much. His little so, heart, his little uh, hummingbird heart. My, that's my a lot hands of are full blast. of hair and I can't see anything. So Star Trek Starring Will I Am Chetner and <laughs> Leonard Nimui coming to a theater near you. Oh, he just has a he has a case of the Gillespies. <laughs> I swear. So Nimoy. Jane. And Fonda. his first name is Wait, what was his first name? Mr. L. Nimoy. <laughs> Say Leonard. I dare Leonard. you. Leonard now say Nimoy. Nimoy. There we go. Devil dog dare you, you mumbling <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Leonard Nimoy, Jane Fonda, and Natalie Wood. Ooh, Natalie Wood. Yeah. When you're a jet, you're a jet to the finish. That wasn't the only interaction Synanon had with Hollywood. I'm, I, I didn't, I didn't want to bite. I'm sorry. Why does this sound eerily reminiscent of the Black Spot to me, though? Um. Don't you oh, from squirrel it? up? Yeah, I was like, don't you squirrel up your face like you don't know what I'm talking about? 
Oh, okay, okay. I it it took me a moment. It took me a moment. There's been a lot of alcohol between then and now. That wasn't the only interaction Synanon had with Hollywood. In 1965, Columbia Pictures released Synanon, featuring a bunch of people I've never heard of before, um, except for one. Leonard Marlon... Nimoy. <laughs> no, I know him. I just can't say his name. Marlon Brando uh, played Chuck. Uh, there was also other people that I'd never heard of before, uh, specifically Chuck Connors, Stella Stevens, and Eartha Kitt. You haven't heard of Eartha you... Kitt. What? No. If I haven't seen any movies now, do you think I would have seen them in the 60s or 70s? Wow. Or 80s. I know you have mentioned or Eartha 90s. Kitt before. When, when did I point. mention Eartha Kitt? <laughs> I don't know. When I first read her name, it immediately popped in my head something that you guys had said at some episode in some point in the last two years. Well, if so... I did, the reference would have been perfect. It, that it would. It is known. This was the last good film Marlon Brando starred in before his fall from grace. Bullshit. Um, I think his argument is that he had no good movies. I was going to say, this doesn't <laughs> qualify as a good movie, firstly. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, <laughs> Marlon Brando wasn't in this movie. Um, I, I, th this movie exists is still, like, I'm I'm dubious about. It existed. Okay. It existed. I was thinking, uh, and, and I kind of spaced when I was originally thinking about it, so I'd forgotten until just now, but I was going to actually watch the trailer for it um, and then show you guys, like, as it, after dark, we could still do it if we have time uh, later on, but it was just something that, like, was so bizarre to me that the fact that it was made at all, but it is true. It was made. Um, yeah. Marlon Brando wasn't in it. Um, he didn't appear at all. Uh, Edmund O'Brien, whoever that is, uh, played Chuck. Also, this was kind of a two part lie. Uh, Marlon Brando had already reached what he called his fuck you years, uh, starting in 1963 with the ugly, ugly American. Uh, so there was a period between The Ugly American in 1963, right up until um, Godfather, uh, that he was pretty much his nadir in his acting, uh, where he pretty much just took a lot of almost, I got a lot of Nicolas Cage vibes where he would just take roles that were far beneath him just for money or because he didn't really care about doing anything else. He even had said at the, at, in later interviews that this was a point in his life where he was just taking uh, acting roles for money and he wasn't doing it for the craft. Isn't that what most people tend to do? But Yes, but still. Um, I threw that in because I watched a, a, um, a documentary or a, a YouTube video covering um, the whole uh, filming of the Island of Dr. Moreau, okay. I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his last movies where he was pretty much, it was just a one of those disaster films that just everything was falling yes. apart. Um, where his and, soul got slapped out of his body and managed to wind up in Val Kilmer. Yeah. Yep. That's why he's been putting on weight steadily since that film. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, that was also, I think that film was the start of uh, Val Kilmer's sort of like, he's an also an asshole actor uh, sort of um, persona, uh, just based off of how he acted during that movie. I'm telling you, that's what happened. The, there was a transference, and that's why Brando, you know, passed soon after. And... Oh, that makes so much sense now. Um, even with all the success, or maybe in spite of the success, uh, Chuck concluded in 1976, wait, did I, no, I wrote that wrong, 1967, I was dyslexic when I wrote that, in 1967, Chuck concluded that the program was in fact not a success, and ended the concept of graduation from the program. He had said previously that freedom to think to a dope addict was like a gun to a baby. What? what? <laughs> he said that. Okay. And he concluded that dope fiends could never fully rehabilitate and re-entering society was a surefire way to fall off the wagon. So you just need to be a monk. Essentially. So, to quote a Steely Dan song... Oh, man. I thought you, you were going to go for a Thelonious Monk, considering the jazz time that would have, previously. But... That would have been good, but no, I, I wasn't that coherent, apparently. All right. Um, you can check in any time you like, but you can never leave. That is an Eagles reference, you silly sack of shit. <laughs> Did you really think you were going to get that? No, I knew that it, it was an easy lie. It was like, 
I, I watched a video about this. So you wanted this. to take it easy is what you're saying? Yes. And they it started with Hotel California. And I'm like, okay, I just have to throw that in there. Especially because that line was kind of interesting too. Um, I, had, I made it a Steely Dan lie because, and I didn't know this until I actually like read through the lyrics and kind of looked at their interpretations of the, of the lyrics, that they actually do reference Steely Dan in the song. Uh, they stab it with their Steely Knives. Um, and that was kind of a callback because apparently in some other songs, Steely Dan referenced the Eagles, but I, I, I forgot when, what song that was, but that was why I added that. Um, and I, appreciate I just wanted your to... musical profundity, Michael, I do. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you guys are all dealing with stuff, you know, in, in the upper echelons of musical knowledge. And I'm like, huh, the Eagles were banned, right? So I like that Ozzy and BTS are the upper echelons of, of musicality for you. Uh, I also like that you disrespect the Eagles because it fits how? the Lebowski. Yeah, he's he's in the theme of the moment fucking here. Hate the Eagles. Hate the fucking Eagles. Not in my goddamn cab, you don't. Um, and <laughs> that was that was pretty much it. I wanted to leave it here because there is actually so much information that I wanted to make it a two-parter. Okay, so Whoa. this is the lead-up. This is pretty much them at their peak. When they were super popular, everything was looking like it was turning out right. And in the next episode, we will start to see their descent into madness. Specifically so, Chuck's descent. So next week we're wrapping this up? We'll see. I haven't finished writing that script yet. And there is a lot of juicy tidbits uh, that I can throw in there to make it super interesting. And there's also a lot of connections, especially for Shane. I see this is the difference between a considerate gentleman and a Michael because I asked whether or not anybody would like to hear more about a topic before I just presumed upon saying three four parts. But you know no, what? Michael's I, like I'm just going to force another one on you whether you want it or not. I mean, we're we're going to do it at this point. Yeah. But I'm excited too. Good. But you have a point. Shane I asked mean, for consent and Michael just can't be bothered. Yep. Hey, if you guys were upset about it enough, it could go the way of, uh, you know, L. Ron Hubbard and it just part one and never a part two or Flat Earth. Flat Earth There's part, a part two, two yes, no part never three. The three. So maybe I'm just uh, good at not finishing uh, multi-part episodes. Who knows? Or anything, In really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I well, I, I'm not going to talk about that, but Enjoy there college. are some things that I finish. Usually involves a lot of crying and being by myself, but. You're Your still dinner? here, and I haven't seen the scars, so I don't believe you. Well, the scars remind us that the past is real. See, so. there, there's the official highbrow musical <laughs> reference the of the show. Yes. Do you tear yourself open? I Just, hate that song yeah. more than anything because it reminds me so much of my high school boyfriend. Oof. Oh, he was edgy. That huh? was like his favorite song, and so I just, I can't. <laughs> That's that's a wow. lot of edge right there. Hopefully he doesn't tear himself open with those edges. It'd be fine if he well, did. If he does, oh, he could sew himself there. shut. Yeah. Oh man, this is my last resort. <laughs> <laughs> so the lies, which you guys got a lot of them, and I'm I'm happy. Three, right? I believe. Firstly, so. before you get any any further along, though, congratulations. Yes. And uh, let me be the first to endorse that the the new approach to research and presentation is infinitely better oh, than yeah. your prior iterations. Yeah, you felt natural, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was really nice. There was actually a couple things that I actually left out, um, like how Santa Monica arrested or even uh, dealt with the zoning laws. Instead of just serving him papers, they actually were like, nah, fuck you, we're going to take the beach back, and they actually sent bulldozers and stuff like that to destroy all the beach property that they had um and that was one of the main reasons why he was uh martyred in that case because they just burst in guns blazing and they're like hey you gotta get out of here and he's like i'd rather serve jail time hashtag but, beach back yeah but other stuff like that i figured well if they wanted to know more then i could just keep it in my head and just explain it instead uh -huh, of uh -huh. i'm gonna write down every single thing <laughs> Like, you know, in 1965, he woke up and he scratched his ass a couple of times and then had an idea based off of that, you know. As you want to do. Mm -hmm. And it was called Klingons uh, Anonymous? Yes. So, lies. Um, you got the first one. Only accepting of uh, theist members. 
they do accept everyone. Though I did not check to see if they accepted people of other religions. I just took the assumption that they did. But who knows? If May I, you yeah. think that if you, if you, the listener, know that it's not the case, you know, you can always leave a comment yelling at me. I had a stab, uh, actually, that I... Oh, oh, you, I'm sorry. By no, all you're means. fine. As you bring that up, though, it reminded me of it. That's why it sinks. Um, did they actually allow individuals of all ethnicities to join, or, or were they exclusionist? As far as I was aware, looking at it, that was the case. They okay. did allow all sorts of my, uh, minorities. They were not exclusionary as far as I saw in any way, shape, or form. I wasn't sure if you were trying to do a rhyming couplet with your lies this week, so I just, you know... <laughs> Nah, that would have been that. I I could see that being a a good way to to go about that. But it was I wanted the 60s. to. Inc- yeah, it was. That's why I said it was like they were kind of forward thinking because they weren't like it wasn't like the 1920s and they were doing it. Yeah, it's not they segregationalist. Only, yeah. Yeah, they were only about ten years off of the civil rights movement and all that other fun stuff. So it wasn't like they were groundbreaking new stuff. But it was right. cool that they were still. Uh, I was more impressed by the inclusion of uh, ex-sex workers and stuff like that because even even today there's still a heavy uh, sort of negative connotation to that. Yeah, but it also probably caused their enrollment to skyrocket, my friend. You know how oh, yeah. many people get into and out of sex work over the course of their lives once they figure out they're not turning a dime anymore? I mean, OnlyFans is... Not, I mean, it is a reason well, it, it is referred to as, you know, the, the oldest profession, my friend, is it's something oh, yeah. that's somewhat innately available to individuals of the fairer sex, for the most part. Mm-hmm. It it has been around for a long time, and it, it will never really go away. So, um, it was it was pretty smart for him to just be that inclusive, because he was more concerned about the healing properties of his program at the time. And getting laid. And getting married. as evidenced by his wife that actually will come into his wife we'll, we'll delve in <laughs> yes most certainly well so i i feel a but, lot of people uh, did unfortunately that will <laughs> uh you could write a book with the names that actually will come into play <laughs> next choose week any well. other word michael Good no Lord. i don't it'll want factor to. into my discussion i'm sure i will introduce it this no. cool little tidbit of information will actually appear next week in this ep- in the next week's episode cool story Thanks, nerd. casey Kasem. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up next on the Gad Down, we're going to bring you buckets of cum from Papa Roach. Come, come, come. Um, all ye faithful. Uh, <laughs> and does anyone else boy. have any stabs before I go through the rest of the lies? Yeah, Maybe you. Into my brain. Well, I, I can't do either of those, so. It's called the Ice Pick Lobotomy, John. I'll be over in 20. Please. The second lie, physical violence was not encouraged. You were right, Shane. That was a most certain lie. Um, and I already explained it in detail. Moving on, Marlon Brando. Oh, wait, hold on. Did I? I skipped one. Oh, my God. You Johnny fiend. Cash is the second lie, which you also caught. Yep. So then the third lie was physical violence. Okay. Um, the fourth lie. Oh, wait, no. You guys got all of them. Every single one? Yeah. Has that ever yeah. happened? I. Um. I think it's happened like one once or twice in one of my episodes because there there are times where I don't think too hard about the lies because Nor I don't you. I don't want them to yeah exactly I don't want them to be so esoteric that like esoteric? no one will find whatever esoteric esoteric tomato potato erotic and neurotic erotic um but I I don't like those sort of very like oh you have to have this like random knowledge of like what I did last episode that i presented where i had some weird information about some off thing that no one else knew about i wanted it to be fairly accessible and also for people at home to catch them as well as so. you're saying this so now i just have like a really bad book advertisement for the new neurotic thriller from james <laughs> cohen <laughs> <laughs> i want to get out of the house but i really can't set my keys down but i really gotta go pee and there's a puddle <laughs> on the ground and that makes me want to pee more but i gotta put my keys down and it's <laughs> The new neurotic thriller, <laughs> P Zone. I'd I'd read that. P Zone, free you say. Wrote it. <laughs> no, I'm not that literate. You'd be a monk if you did. And speaking of monks, your lies. Yes, 
uh, the physical violence, live three, live four, Marlon Brando, and live five, Steely Dan. So you guys did get Damn. them all. All right. Yeah. Well done, guys. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay. So next week we, uh, we continue on. Hashtag beach back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sin and on. Uh, they have those uh, shops in the mall, right? Mm-hmm. Free smells. Don't cannibalize yourself. It's cheap, and it, it doesn't embiggen you. <laughs> Ouch. Um, Shane showed me an example of the bathtub that we were mentioning a few episodes back. Uh, the studio, or our rehearsal, We sh- she calls it the studio bathroom. Uh, so does has she. A, has a shower. Yeah, she does. She's like, oh, you mean the studio tub? It's like, stop. <sighs> Uh, Sam's uh, guest bathroom has a tub in it that uh, won't work for anyone. Yeah, it's two and a half feet across. Like, there's <laughs> a, you have to have like an Ichabod crane ass in order to get into that thing, and be four foot or smaller. It's, like, it's great. It's great it's for children. Thin Gimli. Yeah. Yes. Gimli without being so dummy thick. <laughs> <laughs> how many c's are we talking about two oh, or three least, oh as long as it's not the gimli Ooh. glider my friend or you the heard it gimli here slider. gimli the uh, the dwarf from lord of the rings <laughs> is dummy thick uh, hey the actor is pretty cool uh, john rice davies yeah Thank john you. Rice davies. i knew his last name because it's such a such a unique last name, but I now, I just first. literally said John Reese Davies. Well, yes, and I know. You I... then change it to Rise, not a half second after it leaves my mouth. The <sighs> fuck is wrong with you, Walter? A lot of things. Okay. I also a like how Shane things. Shane wouldn't watch the rest of the TikTok that I sent him or the uh, the Instagram post from Shane Smith. Yeah, I don't need uh, to know. I, you I didn't got need it. to. He already knew. But the re- but it's so good. Two seconds the, uh, in, I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. And by the way, Stephen was not amused. I've seen all. As of a fan seen. of Tolkien, when I mentioned it, he's like, I don't think that makes sense at all. That's actually pretty serious logic. No, I was just describing it. Oh, well, like, I don't think that's really it, how like, that works. Stephen, just just hit me up. I'll send it to you if you ever want to watch terrible things. Do you want to see people die? I have links. So just. Task. Yeah, I'll yeah, he is actually want. still disseminating his wedding video, as we alluded to last week. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the light leave my eyes. There, uh, there is a moment where the twinkle fades. <laughs> aim for the eyes. said I do. I'm just kidding. I love my wife. She, uh, she helped me out when I was scared to confront Jimmy Taco. So I shouldn't Jimmy have said that. Taco. <laughs> what? The fuck? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> you, you, you tease. Now you got to explain. No, it's a bit from the show that Shane will never watch. I thought watch. you were going to say that your wife, you know, helped you out of debt in your parents' uh, I mean, that, house. With that, that white she privilege. did, but it's not that she helped me out of debt as so much that she was like, hey, you know that you can't spend money that you don't have. And I was like, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> she goes, yeah, you spend more than you you spend more than you earn. And I was like, it's the American way. I was like, <laughs> I thought it was America. <laughs> She's like, your credit score is a zero. And I was like, that's good. Just, no, it's it could be good. lower. It's like golf. They could yeah. take away my credit. Your credit score is not DEFCON level, okay? <laughs> Smaller numbers are bad. You shouldn't have to sell your body to pay rent every month. And like, you're well, like, that's how but you I got like here. Yeah. <laughs> I like the sport. Freaking vanilla gorilla. I, oh, you're getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> I I let them take my money every time I have been doing this I wrong. pay them. I do this for the love of the game. I always ask, are you my friend? <laughs> are we still friends? Are you mad at me? Are we okay? <laughs> we cool, right? Is we everything cool. is everything all right? Also, I just wanted to take a quick second to congratulate Courtney on a terrific feat. Um, and that was making spicy potato tacos. She has two of them. She made Taco Bell-esque spicy potato tacos, and they were chef's kiss. Yeah, rub it in that you like to socialize. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, um, whatever, Shane. Don't come nice. to my party. You know me. <laughs> Don't act like this was a surprise, your <laughs> highness. You're not on any mercy mission this time. <sighs> Don't think that just because you want to crack me out of my little insular shell that you're going to be the special one to entice me out with food. <laughs> well. <laughs> well that I guess that is the only way I know how to operate. That's... True fact. 
so funny. We were talking about this at work as I was getting frustrated over it, something that I'm not going to discuss because I can't. <laughs> it's going to get me wound up. But I was talking about the futility of this meeting, and one of my new employees told me, she's like, well, you're okay now. Just go home and get something to eat. And I was like, what is that supposed to mean? Did fucking, like, Clitosaurus Rex manage to make a comeback and just float into somebody else's body? I was like, why is food the only alternative to give me joy? Why can't I choke <laughs> someone to death and watch their life just float out and of their eyes? And you're like, eyes? actually, I'm going to go home and do heroin. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about that? I was like, I have plenty of ways of embracing my misery. Thank you. You're like, actually, my dad choked to death while eating when he was, when I was just a boy. So now I, I don't like to eat at all. I like that she just called you hangry. That's amazing. Well, I had also... apparently is now an actual thing that they acknowledge that hangry is real. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, they're doing Make, studies. Makes sense to me. That, since we've alluded to having, you know, like l- low blood sugar for years and years now. But yeah, <laughs> we can't study medical terms. We'll just call no. it... No, hangry. If it fits on the side of a Snickers bar, it's suddenly accepted <laughs> fact. Yeah. There you go. No fake news about it. Well, you're not you when you're hungry. So. And today's true. episode is actually sponsored by <laughs> Snickers. Um, who am if you're I? Hungry, then? Grab one. Who if I'm I? not me, who do I become? Oh, shit. Mother? I don't even know. Hello? Don't tell Potter. <laughs> I'm really, I'm enjoying the fact that the three of us are now part of the special, uh, you know, company and John is still bringing up the rear and has no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. Nope. So no. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to when he finally opens the door, crawls through the oh. eye, you know, the ivy and, uh, and makes it to the other side and then we'll, we'll be able to discuss. If you want to know, John, he's actually talking about my last episode, uh, Mother Horse Eyes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah we all we all read it without you. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah. While you're still catching up on Revival, yeah. Uh, yeah. we decided to uh-huh. read that. Yeah, for sure. Entirety. Yeah, I got two hours left. I got Dune well, today. I'm starting that one. I'm excited. Ooh. Please do. So, Please and do. assuming we can still go to the theater, you're invited if you can finish <gasps> it before October. I'm invited somewhere? N- nobody invites me anywhere. Just kidding. <laughs> Oof. I'll be staying home and watching it on HBO uh, Max. So have fun and with your little 14-inch TV. Yep, I will. I'm gonna go to the IMAX screen. I have for many away. years. It's not not the size that matters for me. And since we're How doing a little uh, nice little wrap up here, did I tell you last week, Shane, that Becky is diving into your favorite game of all time now? Uh, the game? Uh, s- sexual misogyny. <laughs> In a way, yeah. Uh, no, she's she's playing uh, Red Dead Two. <laughs> oh, bless say, her! She just, she just started. So that is I want Becky to try the other thing, though. I think that would be funny. <laughs> uh, if Becky tried sexual just misogyny, against, yeah. yes. just against John, <laughs> just, <laughs> just the whole time. <laughs> I mean, does she have to verbalize it, or is it in subtext? Because it's, if it's in subtext, then I feel it's already <laughs> happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's just daily life. Well, you sure you could do that uh, with your uh, with your little man fingers? <laughs> you sure you can do that? <laughs> Let me co partner. Hold on. <laughs> it's all she can do but stand on those little weak knees of hers. I mean, Ooh. bless her tiny little knees. I don't know how uh, how they hold her up. So needy. Uh, hardly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how's everyone? How's everybody doing this week? So I actually I would like to start a petition um, for John to do a show, a whole episode, but to research it live. I'd like um, for him to do a show too. I've been begging for it for two years, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for it to happen. So when I he goes this motion. down this like rabbit hole of like Limp Biscuit, like no, and you have to just do a whole episode live right now. I mean, in a world, in a world. <laughs> Where uh, everything that I shared on screen could be, you know, also like any audio that we find could be put into the episode safely, then I would totally do that because I would just do the Fred Durst thing. We would just, you're essentially what you're asking for is just a YouTube video of us reacting to, you know, the algorithm. His banter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, doesn't sound like a bad idea. Because that was, um, 
that was another thing that I, I heard. I heard an episode about uh, on Reply All was YouTube's algorithm, how it used to be versus how it is now. Uh, it was about like Steven Crowder and all that gross shit. Anything uh. that Steven Crowder does is pretty fucking disgusting. <sighs> well. um, but that that was what sparked them diving into YouTube's algorithm because Courtney has a really good episode from Reply All or recommended a good one on TikTok's algorithm. So it led to other things, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I will say that I probably can get uh, get some info on Mr. Fred Durst if y'all are interested, because yeah. I there has to be there are interesting stories from Fred Durst, and I haven't even researched research. They're just you know you hear things through the grapevine. Why um, you uh, why you got to do me dirty like that? Oh, speak dirty to me. Ooh, <sighs> I'm on the outside, John. I'm looking in. I can see through Durst. <laughs> uh, inside your thirsty i can <laughs> see you through the chocolate starfish oh and Kiss speaking of the ass end starfish. of things i believe we've reached <laughs> yeah. it for this episode so oh. it's gonna wrap it up like a sphincter squeeze i hate that title chocolate if starfish. only we could it just, fly it elicits such it's, just, it's so also, really hey, disgusting. Michael, just keep rolling, 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 okay? <laughs> Shane, I know that we don't uh, reward behavior here, but can you ah. at least tell me that my Fred Durst impression was okay? It was actually pretty, it was it was a pretty decent Fred, Fred Durst impression. Durst impression. <laughs> I, I was actually in my head going, like, yeah, that sounds like Fred Durst. Yeah, like, damn, he nailed it. Yeah. Man, this motherfucker's spitting. <laughs> I would never I say that. I don't think you think that. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Chimney chinchilla, you're a hell of a fella, okay? That's just, let's leave that be. <laughs> I just don't know what's uh, happening behind your blue eyes here, but... Uh... Ba, 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 na, ba, 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 na. Oh, from the one they did Mission uh-huh. Impossible 2? Yes, yeah. oh no, I, remember. I have that soundtrack, uh, strangely <laughs> enough. Uh, there's some good stuff on it. I, I enjoyed uh, I Disappear from Metallica, that's... Uh... Yeah, it was like load reload era. Yeah, yeah, some so. good shit. That's what that is. And Rob Zombie's on that soundtrack as well. Some hmm. very interesting material there. That was during the era where you could buy soundtracks and they were actually pretty decent. Like that's when Wind Up started doing a, a yeah. slew of really cool soundtracks. Like the Daredevil soundtrack was fantastic. Oh yeah, we've talked about we've talked about these for sure because yeah. there are to your to your point like probably at least ten to twelve records uh, from movies that are worthwhile. And then I got pissed off because I didn't think during this time to look for uh music inspired by and music from like because they would put yes, the labels uh-huh. on the cds so sometimes you would accidentally you just score. buy the score for the movie and not the soundtrack for the movie so yeah i in there are some things that live in ignominious ends of my cd collection including uh the scorpion king soundtrack which is oh. still pretty tasty. There's a Seven Dust track on there. I think Slipknot's got something on it, but then there's, of course, the Godsmack uh, single yeah. that was off that. Uh, and so I, I have some very... That will be a, a fun game at some point for me to bring out all of the film soundtracks, oh, yeah. and you can guess oh, yeah. the artists that are contained therein, because the Godzilla soundtrack alone will just break oh, everybody's fuck. brain. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So more fun well. content that you can find on the interwebs where we live rent free for the most part. So uh, winging your way on the tubes of you occasionally, which many of these things will likely do. Uh, we present crazy nonsense there every wacky Wednesday almost. For the most part, we didn't this Wednesday because who can be bothered? Uh, but we're over there on the tubes of you, so just search us out 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And you should uh, subscribe there because then you'll, you'll never miss an episode when we put random nonsense up there, including fan friction and the burgeoning book club discussion of, of Stephen King's yes. revival, which I'm very excited to get to eventually when the one who started it first and proposed the concept finishes the book. But, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, we have all of our glorious social media platforms that you can find us on. we got the, the TikTok, the Twitter, the Facebook, and Instagram. And you know where to find them because there's a link tree that I'm going to start including 
in the show description every week so Ooh. that I don't have to pull this shit anymore. <laughs> you can just go find it when you've a fucking mind to, you all lazy you, all you have to do is say, shits. Hit the link in the show notes, and there's our socials. That's yep. all you have to say there. Yep, Bans. as of right now. Done. All right. So oh, find yeah. us everywhere disreputable shit is squeezed from. So for Disinformed this week, I'd like to say thank you to Michael for bringing his C game for once. Thanks, Michael. Oh, wee. Oh, yeah. Oh, wee. Oh, wee. Oh, jeez. My oh, man. Wee. God good. damn, Noop Noop. I want who wants apples. <laughs> that was the best sex of my life. Uh, all right, for Disinformed this week, I'm Shane. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Courtney. Zippity Zoop, we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs>